What's up everybody and welcome to another video. And in the previous video, we uh, finished up our post pruning function. And in this video, now we're gonna make some small adjustments to our code so that we gonna also can use it then for uh, data sets where there are categorical features. And then another change will be that we can also use it for machine learning tasks where we do a regression and not a classification. So let's start with uh, adjusting it so that we can also use or uh, apply it to data sets with categorical features. Therefore, I've already uh, prepared a data set that has categorical features, which is the Titanic data set. So if we uh, print out the head here, then we have here uh, continuous features like the fair, for example, but we also have uh, uh, categorical features, for example, uh, the sex, which is male or female, which is then here a string, or the passenger class, which has values uh, of one, two, or three. And what we want to do here is we want to predict if a person survived or if uh, the person didn't survive. So it's also a classification task. So now to be able to use our post pruning function for this, we only have to make one more change, uh, one change. Namely, therefore, first, uh, let's open up here a new view for the notebook so that we don't have to uh, scroll up and down the whole time. Namely, what we have to change is how we filter our data frames. And that's because we're not going to check if uh, the specific feature is smaller or equal to the value. Because if you, for example, compare it to uh, the sex, then it doesn't really make sense. So in that case, we then we want to uh, filter it in such a way that we check uh, is it equal to this value or is it not equal? So uh, the way we're going to do that then is let's first uh, see how we actually handle in the tree, uh, handle uh, the continuous features and category features in the tree. So let's create a tree. So we're going to say tree equals decision tree algorithm of uh, just this data frame and then then L task is again classification. So then let's just print this tree. So here you can see uh, here uh, we are asking is sex equal to male. So here we just have this comparison operator is just an equal sign, whereas for a continuous features it was smaller or equal to, to that. So then in the filter function, we actually need this comparison operator. So let's uh, put that into uh, put that into a variable. So a comparison operator. This way we can then distinguish between categorical and continuous features. So we're gonna say if a comparison comparison. Okay, let me spell it here. So let's say comparison. Comparison operator is equal to uh, smaller or equal to. Then we're going to filter the data frame like this. So this is then uh, a continuous feature and else we have uh, a categorical feature. Feature, and then we're gonna uh, fill that in a different way. So let's uh, just copy this here. Um, <clears throat> so then we're gonna check if the feature is equal to that value or if it is uh, not equal to that value. And in that case, we don't need to transform the value into a float because it's already a string. So let's uh, delete this. But then we have to make one change here to this here. Namely, uh, normally categorical features can be a string, but it can also be an integer like the passenger class here, uh, which is one which can take on the values one, two, and three. So if you then compare this integer uh, to the string value, then 
it won't match up so we need to transform uh, these uh, features here or these values into a string so we're gonna say s type string and here the same so this is now our new filter data frame function so now uh, it should be working for uh, for this data set so and I've already prepared some code for that so let's run this and there's an error uh, this we have to obviously delete first this we're gonna need later so let's run this again okay so now it is running so what I do here is I loop uh, over a range between 10 and 26 and what I do with this n here is I use it for the max def parameter so in each iteration I create a tree with a different max def size and then I prune this tree again and then I simply ch uh, want to check or then I uh, calculate the accuracy for the tree and for the post uh, for the prune tree on the testing data set and I store these into this dictionary together with the max def and then I create a data frame and the reason I want to do that is so that I can then compare uh, the accuracy uh, of the tree and the prune tree for different max devs so let's see what that looks like and here you can see uh, most of so what we have here is uh, the blue line is the accuracy of well, let's look at it in full screen so here uh, this blue line is the accuracy of the original tree and the orange one is uh, the accuracy of the prune tree and generally as you can see the accuracy of the prune tree is in most cases better so our function uh, seems really to be working but then uh, what I also want to mention is that it's not like the case like we had with our uh, toy data where we always got the same uh, pruned tree here uh, the pruned tree is really based on what the tree looks like so if the original tree was already not so good at uh, making predictions then the prune tree is also not going to be uh, uh, very good so that is always for example going to be at uh, an accuracy of 85 percent for example so the starting point for pruning the tree is also important so for the, what then, then the end result will be and it's also the case that sometimes the prune tree is actually worse and i guess this is because this then just hangs uh, uh, is dependent on how what data points go into the testing data set and training data set so in this case it just happens then to be that uh, the prune tree is worse for making predictions uh, and this is just probably based on what data points are in the test case okay so this is the first change that I wanted to make that I wanted to make and now let's make adjustments so they can also apply our post pruning uh, function to uh, machine learning task where we do regression so therefore I've already also already prepared the code so here's then a bike rental data set so let's run this here and let's also print out the head so here the label is then the label is then how many bikes were rented uh, on a particular day so this is then what we want to predict so now to be able to do that what we need to do is if you look at this slide here again the difference between uh, classification and regression for post pruning is how we create a leaf namely for classification we simply pick the class that appears most often but for regression we take then the average value of those data points so that's that and the other chain or the other difference is instead of counting all the errors that those the decision node or the leaf are making we're gonna calculate uh, the mean squared error so those are two changes that we want to make so let's go back to the code so here is how we determine the leaf and uh, 
this we're gonna actually then put again into its own function. But first of all, uh, to be able to distinguish between classification and regression, let's create another parameter for this post pruning function. So we're gonna say ml task, where we then specify classification or regression. Whoops. So uh, let's uh, copy this and paste it also in the in the recursive calls of the function. And this ML task parameter we also gonna then need in the pruning result function. So let's uh, put this also, oops, also here and here. So then let's run this function. And then we're gonna create it here, a new parameter, which is the ML task. So, then we can uh, determine the leaf uh, based on which uh, machine learning task we are doing. So therefore, let's also create a new uh, function. So this we simply gonna call determine leaf. And here what we need is uh, the training data. And then simply uh, we need to know what uh, ML task we are doing. So then we're gonna say if the machine learning task uh, is equal to regression, then we want uh, the mean value uh, of those other labels. So we're gonna say return uh, df train label to get all uh, the labels in this data and then we simply want to calculate the mean of that. So that's how we create a leaf if we're doing regression. Otherwise then we are doing a classification and there so we're going to say else return and then here we can just uh, cut this code and then paste it. Okay, so this is our determine leaf function. So this one, this is what we then gonna call here. So we put in train and the ML task. And then we need also another function for determining uh, the errors. So let's create another function for that. So here we're gonna say uh, determine uh, determine errors errors and what we need here is the validation data and uh, the tree and then obviously also the machine learning task. So we're gonna say df mel uh, tree and then ml task. So here then again, we're gonna say, or let's first uh, create, uh, or let's create the actual value. So we're gonna say actual values equals df where label. So those are simply, so that we have then all the, all the labels. And then we're gonna say predictions equals make predictions of the FL and the tree. So in this case, then if, if we have uh, the whole tree, then it makes predictions, but it's also gonna work if we just have this leaf. So now we can uh, calculate the errors depending on which ML task we are doing. So we're gonna say if ML task is equal to regression, then we want to return uh, the mean squared error. So I'm gonna say return. And the way that we calculate the mean squared error is that we take the actual values minus the predictions. Those are then the errors. And those we want to uh, square. So then we have a list of squared errors 
and then we simply want to have uh, the mean of those squared errors. So that's then if you're doing a regression. Otherwise, we are again doing classification. And in that case, we simply return. So we are calculating then in this same way here. So we're going to say sum of <coughs> the actual values that are not equal to the predictions. So that is that. So this is now the determined errors function, which we then going to call here. <coughs> so determine errors. And we put in dfval, the tree, and the ml task. <coughs> no, here obviously we're not putting in the tree. We're putting in the leaf because we want to uh, calculate the errors for the leaf. And then let's uh, copy this. And here we put in the tree. Okay, so this is this function. Now, so this should now hopefully be working. So let's uh, look at the code that I've already prepared. <coughs> so here I'm going to create this tree. Here's the max def is 10. And then I print out the mean squared error for the tree and for the prune tree. And as you can see, the mean squared error of the tree is higher than the one of the prune tree. So the prune tree seems to be better at making predictions. And here I have then created a plot. So then here uh, I've made predictions using the tree and the prune tree. So this black line here are the actual values from the testing data set. And those dotted lines here are uh, the predictions of uh, the tree which is the green dotted line and the predictions of the prune tree, which is the orange dotted line. And as you can see here, in this case, for example, the orange line is closer to the actual values than this green line here. And here, uh, here's then basically the same. And here again, the orange line is closer as well as here and here. Here probably maybe uh, the green line is closer, but here again, the orange line is closer. Here is more or less the same. And here again, the orange line is closer. And here is uh, hard to tell. And here is basically the same. So again, uh, the prune tree is better at making predictions. So our post pruning function seems uh, seems to be working. And with that, now we have reached the end of this video. And this is now how you can uh, code a post pruning algorithm from scratch for doing a classification task and regression task. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.